Welcome to the first introductory course on a series of four courses on uh, physics. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, physics and measurement to start with. So the uh, first question we have to answer is what is the aim of physics? Well, physics is a discipline that aims to identify fundamental laws of nature. And how do we identify fundamental laws of nature? We try to formulate them using math. So math is used as a tool to develop theories that can accurately predict experimental results. So physics is an experimental science. Uh, we have to account for the experimental uh, observations by using uh, these uh, theories that use math as a tool. Uh, a good example is uh, Newton's laws of motion. So this works in the limit of uh, velocities much less than the uh, speed of light. Uh, so th these are basically our everyday observations. Uh, a car traveling, for example, uh, uh, to the right or to the left, etc. It's accelerating uh, and collisions and things like that. Uh, and then we have Einstein's theory of special relativity, and this is going to account for observations for velocities close to the uh, speed of light, and that's going to be a more general theory. So Newton's laws of motion are basically modified uh, to take into account relativistic effects. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we can classify physics uh, in general in two. Uh, classical physics and modern physics. Uh, classical physics basically refers to the physics, uh, the theories developed before 1900, and these include uh, classical mechanics, uh, thermodynamics, uh, electromagnetism, and optics, for example. In modern physics, uh, for uh, the theories developed after 1900, we have relativity and we have quantum mechanics uh, that is try to account for observations at the atomic level. Uh, so in all of these uh, branches of physics, we have uh, some quantities that we deal with. These are uh, either fundamental or derived quantities. So each measurement is associated with this the physical quantity which is either fundamental or derived. So in mechanics, what are these fundamental quantities? We have length, uh, that is in SI units, system interna international system of units, uh, meters, uh, it's measured in meters, then we have mass, which is measured in uh, kilograms, and we have time, which is measured in seconds. And all other quantities in mechanics are derived from these three fundamental quantities, length, mass, and time. For example, speed is the distance you travel in unit time, length divided by time. Force is mass times acceleration. It's mass times length divided by time squared. Density is mass per unit volume, mass divided by volume, but volume is length cube. Uh, for example, density of aluminum is 2.7 10 to 3 kilograms per meter cube. That is the unit we use. So, <clears throat> but when we talk about other uh, branches of physics, we have other fundamental quantities. For example, in thermodynamics, we have absolute temperature. Uh, in electromagnetism, we have charge, which is measured in coulombs. Temperature is measured in kelvins amount of substance that is measured in moles, etc. So uh, the subject of this course is mechanics, so we will be dealing with these three fundamental quantities and quantities, physical quantities that are derived out of uh, them. So how do we define length? Length is the distance between two points in space. Okay. So we need to have a reference uh, in order to define a unit for length. Well, one meter is the distance traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of 1 over the speed of light. Uh, and uh, with that definition, uh, we, we, if you look at the scales uh, for different uh, 
problems. For example, diameter of a proton is 10 to minus 15 meters in this range. It's in the femtometer range. Diameter of a hydrogen atom is 10 to minus 10 meters in the angstrom range uh, or sub-angstrom range. And radius of the Earth is 6.37 10 to 6 meters. It is 6,370 kilometers. The second fundamental quantity, mass, it's the quantity of inertia possessed uh, by an object. And one kilogram is the mass of a specific platinum, platinum iridium alloy cylinder, which is kept in the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in France. Uh, so that's our reference. Uh, examples, uh, we have rest mass of an electron is 9.11 10 to minus 31 kilograms. Mass of the Earth is 5.98 10 to 24 kilograms. And the third fundamental quantity is time. It's the duration between two events. Uh, one second is 91926317770 times the period of vibration of radiation from the cesium-133 atomic clock. So it's uh, basically our reference to define a second. Uh, with that, age of the universe is 4 times 10 to 17 seconds in this range. So, uh, and nuclear, a nuclear collision takes about 10 to minus 22 seconds. So those are the uh, two extreme scales for these uh, fundamental quantities. Now, <clears throat> you may have noticed we, we use this kilogram, uh, gram, uh, meter, millimeter, etc. So these prefixes for powers of 10 are important in uh, talking about uh, quantities. So uh, 10 to minus 1 is deci, D, so uh, 1 decimeter is 10 to minus 1 meter. 10 to minus 2 is centi. So 1 centimeter is 10 to minus 2 meter. 10 to minus 3 is milli. 1 meter is 1,000 millimeter, for example. 10 to minus 6 is micro. 10 to minus 9 is nano. 10 to minus 12 is pico. 10 to minus 15 is femto. Then we have 10 to minus 18 atto, 10 to minus 21 zepto, 10 to minus 24 yocto. Well, basically, we're using uh, all the way down to femto here, so these things are rarely used. Uh, 10 to 3 is kilo, uh, 10 to 6 is mega. For example, we in computer language, we use megabytes, uh, gigabytes, 10 to 9, terabytes, 10 to 12. Uh, petabytes 10 to 15 and even exabytes are being used right now 10 to 18 and if you go to 10 to 21 it is zeta and 10 to 24 is yota so we have to be aware of these prefixes for powers of 10 and how do we name them now <clears throat> having talked about these physical quantities an important uh, identity of these quantities is their dimensions. So we have to use dimensional analysis to check for the uh, physical nature of a quantity. We use square brackets to, to denote the dimensions. Uh, as, as I have mentioned, we have three fundamental uh, quantities, length. Uh, we use L, mass, M and T stands for time. For example, the dimension of area, we use square brackets uh, of in, inside area uh, or area inside square brackets is the dimension of area and it means it's going to be L squared. And the dimension of the speed is the distance traveled per unit time, it's length divided by time, so its dimension is L over T. Now, when we have an equation between two physical quantities, for this equation to be physical or to be real, it has to satisfy the equation of the dimensions. So the dimensions on both sides of the equation should be the same. So let's take a look at a few examples. A car starts at rest, moves with constant acceleration A, 
uh, and we know that it's going to move a distance 1 over 2 at squared. So this is an equation that is basically connecting physical quantities on the left, the distance, and on the right, time and acceleration. So let's say that we don't know this result and uh, we want to know how x can depend on acceleration and time. So we can set x uh, proportional to uh, acceleration to some integer n and time to some integer m, as you can see here. Now we have to check for dimensional consistency. So what we do is we look at the dimension of acceleration to power n and time to power m. Now acceleration has a dimension l divided by t squared. It's the change in uh, velocity per unit time. The t dimension of t is capital T, that's time. So the dimension of a to the n, t to the m would be l over t squared to the power n, which is l to the n, t to the n, 2n, and uh, the dimension of t to the m is capital T to the m. So this will be l to the n, t to the m minus 2n. And on the other hand, we have uh, on the left hand side of the equation, the distance traveled, that is that is a dimension L. So L must be equal to L to the N, T to the M minus 2N. So this is going to be equal to uh, L. So what has to happen now? Uh, we need to have the same dimension on both sides. So N must be equal to 1. So N is 1. And we don't have any T on the right hand side here. So it's M minus 2N should be 0. T to 0, that's 1 m minus 2n is 0, so m must be equal to 2n, which is 2. Therefore, we find that n is 1, m is 2, so x is proportional to a t squared. So this is our result from dimensional analysis. So you can see that this dimensional analysis gave us information about the dependence on physical uh, quantities but not the proportionality constant one half here so this analysis does not give information about the proportionality constant now let's take a look at a few uh, other examples uh, show that the equation v is equal to a t is dimensionally correct so what is this uh, the velocity is acceleration times time constant acceleration motion Okay, so the dimension of velocity is L divided by T, the, the distance traveled per unit time. Dimension of acceleration is the change in velocity per unit time, L divided by T squared. The dimension of T is capital T, that is time. So what is the dimension of the right hand side? The, in square brackets AT, we have the dimension of AT, that is L over T squared multiplied by T, that is L over T which is the dimension of the velocity. So this is dimensionally consistent. Another example, in uniform circular motion, we have acceleration proportional to radius to some integer and velocity to some integer, uh, n and m, and we have a proportionality constant, possibly a proportionality constant, k here. So what is n and what is m? Okay, so if I check the dimension of A, it is L over T squared, the change in velocity per unit time. The dimension of the radius is capital L, length. Dimension of the sp uh, speed is L over T. So acceleration dimension L over T squared must be equal to dimension of R to the N, which is L to the N and dimension of v to the m, l to the m divided by t to the m. So here I note that k is a proportionality constant which is unitless. So k shouldn't have any dimensions. So with that, for dimensional consistency of this equation, n plus m must be equal to 1 and m must be equal to 2. So if m is 2 and n plus m is 1, then that means n should be equal to 1. So acceleration is equal to kv squared over r. And later on, when we analyze uniform circular motion, we find that k is equal to 1. So it's v squared over 
r. That's called the centripetal acceleration. Another example is law of universal gravitation. F is equal to, force is equal to, the gravitational constant G, capital M, M divided by R square. This is the force that is exerted by two uh, objects with masses capital M and M at a distance uh, R, center to center distance R, from each other. And the question is, what is the SI unit of the gravitational constant G. Force is uh, has a dimension m times L over t square. F equals ma is uh, Newton's second law, uh, as we will discuss uh, later. So it has m over L m t m L over t square dimension. The dimension of the m's the masses are both m, and dimension of r is L. So we have force m L over t square is equal to dimension of G multiplied by m square over L square. So we find that the dimension of G is m L over t squared multiplied with L square over m square. So the m's cancel and we have L cubed divided by m t square. So in this case the proportionality constant G has a dimension and it is meter cube divided by kilogram second square that is the unit because we were asked the SI unit. SI unit of length is meters, mass is kilograms and time is seconds so it's meter cube divided by kilogram second square. Okay so to summarize in this lecture we talked about uh, the main purpose of physics that was to use uh, math as a tool uh, to develop theories that can ac accurately predict experimental results, uh, experimental observations, and these lead to the identification of fundamental laws of nature. We talked about classical physics uh, for uh, the theories developed between 1900 and modern physics for theories developed after 1900. Uh, we have distinguished between fundamental and derived quantities. Fundamental quantities in mechanics are length, mass, and time. All other quantities in mechanics are derived out of these three. The SI units are meters, kilograms, and seconds. And in other disciplines uh, of physics, we have other fundamental quantities. Absolute temperature, this is in, measured in Kelvin in thermodynamics. Charge measured in clubs in electromagnetism, amount of substance mole that is uh, also uh, commonly used in thermodynamics. And length, the fundamental, uh, first fundamental quantity in mechanics is the distance between two points in space. Uh, mass is the quantity of inertia possessed by an object and time is the duration between two events. We talked about typical uh, values for uh, the two extremes in the uh, common scales of these uh, physical quantities. And we talked about prefixes for powers of 10. So uh, those go as deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico, femto, atto, zepto, yocto. And in uh, for the larger quantities, we have kilo, mega, giga, tera, peta, exa, zeta, and yota. And then we talked about dimensional analysis that is basically having an equation between uh, two or more physical quantities. Uh, this equation has to satisfy the consistency of dimensions for it to be physical. And we have demonstrated this with several examples. We have talked about uh, the constant acceleration motion ex uh, gives, giving us a displacement one half a t square. We talked about uh, constant acceleration motion, uh, the velocity change with time, uniform circular motion acceleration, uh, law of universal gravitation as examples. And we have noticed that sometimes this proportionality constant is unitless. Sometimes the proportionality constant may have a unit. So this has to be um, basically told in order to do this dimensional analysis properly.